What is up everyone? Welcome back to my video. Today I want to cover a subject which has been extensively covered all over the internet when it comes to programming and when it comes to you guys picking a programming language that you would like to learn. Now I'm guessing whoever is watching this probably wants to be successful in life and probably wants to learn a programming language that will make them very employable, will make big corporate companies want to hire them, etc, etc, etc. Now in this video I kind of want to give you my own opinion on what you guys should learn as your best programming language out there. But I also want to let you know that that is not necessarily always the case with being employable. And because I've worked in Silicon Valley for a whole year and I've worked around all these corporate companies and I interviewed for a corporate company, I kind of know what people look for. So I'm going to talk about that today, give you my opinion on everything and how you should approach 2020 when it comes to learning your programming languages and growing as a person. But before we get there, I need to do something. Hey guys, I'm back. So the aim of today's video is not only to specify the languages that I think you guys should learn in the year of 2020, but also to give you an overall idea why I think those languages work really well together. But before we get there guys, if you enjoyed this little video montage and if you like my videos, please give me the thumbs up and please subscribe if you still haven't. Uh, it'll mean the world to me. And make sure you ring that bell to stay on top of everything that I do. But without any further delay, let's get on with what I was going to say. Now before I get started, I would like to bust some myths that I heard other YouTube creators talk about when it comes to learning a specific programming language and how much it's going to benefit you. And one of the things I kept hearing over and over is programming language that you learn will depend on your future salary. What will determine the kind of salary that you're going to get is how good you are at that programming language and how well you can adjust to the circumstances that you're in. Which basically means how well fitting you are into the team. Secondly, learning a single programming language is never enough. You need to have a whole variety of different languages that you can showcase for your person to be valuable as an employee to a specific company. I don't necessarily just mean, hey, let's learn all these backend languages, but you need to have a variety of different technologies in your set. I'm not saying you need to know them perfectly, uh, but just the base understanding of something is extremely important when it comes to employment. So now let's move on to what languages I think are best for you to learn. And the first one I picked is JavaScript or TypeScript. Now you may be thinking, why have you picked JavaScript? The reason I included JavaScript is because it grasps that big portion of front end into your whole technology stack that you should technically have. Even if you don't like front end, and I know a lot of people don't like front end, and a lot of people absolutely love front end. I'm one of those. I love front end. I've worked with front end all my life. I think it's super creative. And people who are coming from a background where they don't like front end should still learn some of front end programming. Now, the reason is when you go into a corporate company or any small company or a startup, you're going to end up working with people who are working with front end. Now in your daily scrums, in your daily meetings, you should have an understanding of what they're talking about. You should be an individual which has an overview of most of the technologies that you're working with. And because front end is such a big part of programming and just software development, every single good engineer should know a little bit about it. Now, if you're a UI enthusiast, then I'll totally recommend diving deep into JavaScript and learning TypeScript and learning some of the additional frameworks like React and React Hooks and Webpack, uh, because in the end, that is what will allow you to develop really good front-end apps. Finally, JavaScript is a simple language to learn. If you have a programming background, then no problem, you're going to dive into it really easily if you haven't already. Um, if you don't, there is so many resources out there for JavaScript and it's just going to make it very easy for you to go through the whole flow of learning everything. Now onto programming language number two. I think the most beneficial language that you could learn in this coming year is Golang. 
Well, Golang was released a few years ago, but Golang's compatibility and the amount of features that it offered wasn't as extensive. Now, many people don't know this, but Golang is actually much faster than Python. Well, as time went on, Golang has started to become more extensive and offer much more features with the way it is built. And now it has many, many more supporting libraries. And even over the past last year, Golang has really grew to become a programming language that's already extremely powerful. The reason many corporate companies are not yet implementing Golang into their work ethic is because they have a really large workforce of developers. And it's extremely hard to take all those developers and tell them, hey, you're working with Python, I want you to work with Golang now. Because it's a huge barrier for everyone to kind of overcome. Learning syntax is one thing, understanding the background of how Golang works is another. And both of those require time. And for really big companies, it's not worth to take that whole developer workflow and tell them, hey, you guys just have to shift to another language. That's why Golang isn't being implemented that quickly as of yet. Golang is a very futuristic language. By futuristic, I mean it's very future-proof and it's going to do extremely well in the future. So if you have the patience and the time to learn Golang, I'll totally recommend it. Sit down, uh, read the docs. There is really good guides out there that take you step by step how to learn it and get that under your belt because that's what's going to make you stand out in the future to becoming a more overall and well-developed person in the world of programming and as a software developer. Now, the final programming language I think you guys should learn is Python. Well, of course, Python had to be in there. It is the staple of programming and it is a programming language that's there and will not be going away anytime soon. So now, why will Python always be the language that is there and is very fundamental and everyone will always want to learn it? And I think everyone should. Well, Python is extremely advanced with the amount of libraries that it offers. And it's also very fast, not as fast as Go, but also very fast. Why would you want to learn Python at this time of year and how could you still get a head start? Well, let me trace back a little bit and tell you a little story. When I was in California working for the corporate company, there were people out there and they referred to those specific people as unicorns. Now, maybe you've heard of what a unicorn is, but it's an individual that specializes in three different areas, artificial intelligence, machine learning and data science. Those are the three most powerful areas that are going to drive our world one day. Python has extremely powerful libraries that are created for it, and they are flexible enough to offer this kind of data handling capabilities that Python has. Now, when you're learning Python, you essentially want to strive to become a unicorn. You want to specialize in all those three areas because that's where the future sits. That's the most important part of programming. That's going to make technology explode. And that's the next steps that we're going to be taking. And because Python is so already fundamentally established, that's the programming language that is picked for such requirements. So now going back and looking at those three programming languages in general, what's the benefit of learning all those three at once? Well, the reason is that when you learn all three or you have some basic understanding of all three, you're gonna be a very well-rounded person in the industry. You're gonna know some front-end, you're gonna know some back-end, and you're also going to be working on languages which are yet to become extremely extensive and very popular. So to sum up, I hope you guys got some information that is valuable out of this. And I hope you'll take my advice into consideration and start learning those languages. Uh, let me know down in the comments what your preferred languages of choice are and if you agree with me and disagree. And we can have an awesome discussion about this because I want to build up a community of software developers. Make sure to tell me what languages you think are best for 2020. And I hope you guys have an amazing Christmas and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh man, I wake up.